Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Gretchen and today I'm back with another Women's Prize for Fiction review and today is the long-listed title and then she fell by Alicia Elliott. Now the first thing I will say about this book is it is not one that I am likely to ever forget. This was a very unique book and this story has stuck with me since I have finished it and as a matter of fact I finished this book several weeks ago and I just haven't had a chance to sit down and do the review and when I was reviewing my notes that I took prior to filming this video I realized that I didn't even need the notes this book is still very fresh in my mind and uh, kudos to the author for being able to take this book and kind of bore into my head and take up residence there because this is definitely a a book that will stick with the reader well after it is done. Now this book follows our main character and her name is Alice and Alice is an indigenous woman. She is on the surface and in her mind living the best life possible. She was able to get away from the Mohawk reservation that she had grown up on. She is living in an affluent neighborhood within Toronto so she is financially secure. She is married Married to a white man by the name of Steve and Steve is an academic and he just so happens to be studying Mohawk culture and she is a new mom so her and Steve have recently had this little baby girl and she is living supposedly her best life but as we start to read more and more of the book we start to see as the reader the cracks in the veneer of her life. We start to see that even though on paper she has everything that she should need, her life is kind of falling apart and she is really struggling. And this book follows her down that path of her life kind of spiraling and her falling into the depths of uh, what we could probably assume as being postpartum depression and also just a, a decline in her mental health in general. And this was a really, really interesting book and it tackled so many different uh, subjects, not only mental health and what she was struggling with as a new mom, but we also have that angle of her being an indigenous woman that is married to a white man. She is dealing with all of her friends and family that still remain on her reservation, and she is feeling disconnected from them and she's also feeling like an alien in her current world because she doesn't feel like she belongs there and we go through several scenes within the book where she is up against challenges from her neighbors or people within her community that are making her feel like she doesn't belong and they are being racist and they are profiling her and we as the reader have to question are these things actually happening is that the intent of the people that are on the other side of her speculations or is this a symptom of her decline in in mental health are these things actually happening and this book was so interesting because as a reader you really are on guard the whole time you're definitely seeing things play out with the way that Alice, who is obviously narrating this book, but we as the reader have to question what is real and what is just a symptom of her mental health. And there are so many things within this book that really will stop and make you think. And the other thing about this book, and I I'm chuckling because this book 
I was following it for a, a good while and I was like yeah like this book is really interesting and although there were some surrealist elements very early on in the book things just got bat crap crazy about two-thirds of the way in and I was just like what book am I reading? Things are weird. <laughs> And I know that as we started to get to those points where things started to get weird, that that was a tool that the writer was using to kind of put the reader in the same headspace as Alice. And I really did appreciate that. But what I will say is for me personally, I started to lose the plot a little bit as we went down the proverbial rabbit hole. And obviously too, the the main character's name being Alice, we have the title and then she fell, I'm assuming it's and then she fell down the rabbit hole. And then we have the imagery on the uh, cover of the book which looks like Alice in Wonderland falling down that rabbit hole. So there were definitely a lot of elements of surrealism and magical realism within this book that were unexpected and at the beginning they really worked for me. There is a very striking um, scene that happens at the very beginning of the book that I really enjoyed. And it's the type of magical realism that I like in my books. But then once we started to get to the end and things really started to spiral out of control for Alice, like I said, things just got way too weird for for me to follow and it really started to make me lose some of the enjoyment that I was having in the story. I was I was at a point where when she was spiraling that I was still relating to her and I was still following along with her plight but then once things got to a certain point I was just focusing on the absurdity of the story and no longer really focusing on what the author was trying to say and the importance of this being the decline of Alice's mental health. And I know that there are a lot of important points that the author was likely trying to make, but at the end of this book, it just got to be almost a novelty in relation to how strange the book was turning into. And I feel like the author got us to our destination. And then once we got there, the author just kept going while the rest of us just remained behind. And I will say that I like a weird book. I really do. I love a lot of those books that are just totally out there. But this one, like I said, it was a book that was really trying to say something. And I think that it just overstepped and it kept going down that rabbit hole until I ended up getting tangled in everything. And by the time I got to the end of the book, I was no longer following the plot and the story. And I was more focused on just all of the strange things. And when I finished the book, instead of me sitting back and pondering all of the themes and the important things that the author had to say, I was more focused on the absurdity of all of the things that were happening, which I don't think was the author's intent. So at the end of the day, although this was an enjoyable read and I appreciated the book for probably three quarters of it, that last quarter I could have done without. And if it had toned itself down a little toward the end, I think that this could have very easily been a four and a half star read for me. But I ended up settling on a three and a half just because 
I ended up feeling like I lost myself and I lost the plot as we got to the end just because it was so uh, chaotic and I couldn't keep things straight and I no longer knew what was real and what wasn't. So I am a little shocked because I actually predicted this book to make the shortlist. So when it didn't, I was really kind of surprised. I expected the fact that this was a very experimental book, that this was a book unlike anything that I had ever read before, that it was going to go further into the prize, but it ended up not. And it didn't make that short list, but I think that there are still going to be a lot of readers, myself included, um, that can appreciate this book, even though it wasn't an absolute favorite of mine. So I'm curious to know how many of you have read the book, if you had a different experience than me, if this was a book that carried you through from start to finish, or if you had a similar experience like me where it just started to get a little too weird and confusing at the end. Another book down for the Women's Prize for Fiction. There are still a couple books that I have read already that I have to do reviews for and I'm really getting down to the last few books. I am actively reading one and then I think I only have three more books to read. So we're getting close to the end. It has been quite a trip and this book was definitely a part of that trip. And yeah, so we'll see what happens with the rest of them. And as far as the books that I have yet to read, there are two titles that were shortlisted that I still have yet to read. And I'm actually waiting on both of them to come in from the library. So depending on when those come in, you might actually see reviews for some of the long listed books before I get to the shortlist. And then of course, once I get finished with all of the books, I will come back with a winner prediction video as well. So until we read again, bye!